Welcome to this art lesson. This is going to be the last part of this portrait and today we're going to be working on the mouth and the nose. Along with the eyes, I think the nose and the mouth are among the most important parts of any portrait. It's one of the first parts that a viewer takes notice of, so I thought it would be important to dedicate a full video to these two parts of the portrait. Down below in the video description, I'll have links for the first two parts of this skin texture painting lesson. If you're new here, I'd like to welcome you to this channel, and if you watch any of my other videos, welcome back and thank you for stopping by. So let's get right into this painting lesson. Up on the screen you'll see the two formulas I used to mix these flesh tones. Now I broke it into two values, a dark and a light. Both of these colors were mixed with Createx illustration colors and the lighter shade is warmer and the darker shade where we're gonna get some of the shadows is a slightly cooler tone. The first thing I'd like to do here is start on this upper lip by adding in some of the shadows. So here I'm using the darker value, number two, and I'm using that to spray in some of the dark cast shadows at the very bottom of this upper lip. I want these edges sharp and defined, so I'm using a few tools to help me out. One is just a normal piece of copy paper that I ripped, and when I use this as a shield and spray over it, I get a nice organic edge, so the line is not too sharp and it doesn't look sterile like you get from, you know, a, a straight piece of paper or an airbrush shield. If we take a look at our photo reference, we can see that there's a lot of texture to the lips. And you're going to find this to be a similar situation with any portrait you work on. It doesn't matter if the gender or the ethnicity, there's always a lot of texture to the lips. I want to add some shadows here before we get into anything else. So I'm taking this ripped piece of paper and lightly spraying over the edge of it. Now I'm going to do this a few times on the left side of this lip to see what these look like. If you watched the last part of this painting tutorial, I talked about the light source. The major light source is coming from the right, so that means the shadows are going to be on the opposite side. They're going to be on the left. So just like adding the other skin textures, I find it easier to add the shadows in first. I'm going to continue using my shield to define the lower part of this upper lip, and I'm also going to add some variety to these creases on the lip. So instead of using the ripped piece of paper, I'm going to use this shield to have some straighter lines, and it's always good to try to mix up any sort of texture. It's going to help give a more natural look to your image. Now for these textures, we're just going to stick with this one color, which is the darker value. And the nice thing about using one color is it forces you to focus in on the values over anything else. The values in your painting are going to play a much larger role in the final image than the actual colors you use. And while I have this color in my airbrush, I'm just adding in some of the hairs where the mustache would be uh, for the facial hair. So moving down to the lower lip here, I just want to add a few more of these shadows in. Now while I'm doing this, I'm trying to place them in random areas, so just moving them up and down on this upper lip, trying the best I can to avoid adding any sort of pattern to this. And I know I talked about this in the last part of this video, but one of the biggest traps we fall into is our natural inclination to add patterns to something, where in nature, things like wrinkles, they really don't have a pattern to them. They're kind of random. And I know when I'm working on any sort of painting or drawing, I really have to fight this urge of adding in these natural patterns. So do the best you can to try to think about it and look at any sort of thing that you're working on that has randomness, something like skin texture, and just pay attention. See if you're adding a pattern to it, because if you're not aware of it, you most likely are. So now that we have the basic contours of this upper lip in, I'm going to use my texture template and lightly spray over the top of it. This is just going to break up any of that uniform look of the gessoed canvas. It's going to break up that white flat look. And then when we switch over to our eraser later to pull out some highlights, we're going to have something to work with, just a bit of texture in it. Looking at my reference, I notice that there's a subtle shadow right under the lower lip before we get to that very dark cast shadow. So what I'm doing here is I'm switching over to my texture template and I'm using the edge of this to help define the edge. I just kind of place the curve on it and lightly spray. And you can see just with that, we get a nice soft edge. You could of course use a ripped piece of paper for this that you kind of rip in a curve and that'll work just fine too. Since every shadow is always going to have a highlight, we're going to switch over to the eraser here and we're going to start pulling out some highlights. Now, when we sprayed in those shadows, we're going to get some overspray that naturally sprayed over the top part of this lip. So even though we didn't directly spray paint on it, there is still some paint there that we could erase into. So not only am I pulling out highlights here, I'm also using my eraser to help define and clean up some of these shadows that we put in. The nice thing about switching over to an eraser is it kind of gives you a buffer when you're working with your airbrush you know that when you're painting with your airbrush, you don't have to have everything perfect exactly the way that you want it because you just know that you're going to switch back over to your eraser and you're going to be able to use that to help clean up those mistakes. To add the color to the lips, what I'm doing is I'm switching over to my lighter flesh tone, which is color number one, and I added about two or three drops of scarlet, which is a bright red color, into that mixture. This way the color is going to essentially be the same flesh tone, but it's going to be slightly warmer, and this is going to help make it look more natural for lips. 
while I'm working on this, I'm constantly looking back at my reference, and sometimes I notice here that some areas of the lips are lighter and some areas are darker. So while I'm spraying this in, I'm just trying to add some of the darker areas where I see them. And if I want to color darker, all I do is spray more paint because this transparent mixture is very dark right out of the bottle. I adjust the light and the dark by how much I spray. If I just spray this out 100% and keep spraying it, the color is going to almost look pure black. And as you can see, if I lightly spray it over the lips, we get kind of a reddish color. So it's really nice to have that control uh, that we can get with our values and almost like a hue change with just how much paint that we put down. And an airbrush is such a great tool to adjust those values. Just a reminder to not add too much paint. You could always go darker later on. Just add a light value so when we erase into it, the paint's going to pull out very easily. So what we're doing here is we're switching back to the eraser and we're basically doing the same thing we did before by pulling out the highlights to the right of each one of these shadows. The reason I like to build up my textures is that it makes the process much easier for me and it's also more forgiving. When you start with lighter values you give yourself a layer of protection meaning that you kind of map out the areas where you're going to have your darks and your lights and once you're happy with where they are and you feel like you can commit to them then you could add more paint and really set them in place but it's just so much easier and, and better to start with these lighter tones build them up to see where they're comfortable and then you can darken them up and you know add up build up that contrast to make it look more realistic. While I'm doing this, I'm constantly looking back at my reference, trying to pull the highlights where I see them. And you don't have to go overboard and try to get everything exactly right. If you see a highlight, just try to put it down in a corresponding place on your painting. And it should look just fine. You don't have to really, you know, get very obsessive and try to get everything absolutely perfect. While you're using your eraser, you may notice that you pull out highlights too bright. And this isn't a problem at all because with the airbrush, we could lightly spray back over it to darken it down. When you lighten too bright, it just adds more texture to it. So it's never really a problem. Going too dark with your paint is a problem because you're going to have to lighten it either with an eraser or a lighter opaque paint. And that introduces that blue shift and it just makes so much more work for yourself so if you're too light in the painting it's no big deal if you get too dark with their values then you're going to have problems so once i get to a level like this where i feel like i basically finished this part of the upper lip what i like to do is stop and then walk away from it for a little while maybe 20 minutes or an hour and then come back to look at it with fresh eyes usually when you do this you'll start noticing some mistakes or some things you want to change and it's just a good habit to get into it's if you try to do your painting all in one shot there's a lot of things that you're not going to notice because you kind of get fatigued you see the same thing over and over and you stop noticing those little details that you may have missed. So give that a shot, you know, maybe work for 20 minutes to an hour and then take a break. Now I'm switching back to my darker color, which is number two, and I'm gonna start working on this lower lip. And just like the upper lip, I'm starting on the left side, adding in some textures and working left to right. For me, it makes it so much easier if I focus on one part and then I move along from that part to the next part. You know, what I mean by that is I'm not jumping from the left side of the lip to the right side of the lip. Of course you can, there's, there's no right or wrong way to paint. But for me, I just notice it's easier if I start on one side and really pay attention to it and then use that as my reference as I move further along to the other parts. As I'm working on this, of course, I'm always looking at my reference because that's my guide. And I'm also spraying some of this paint very lightly along the upper part of this lower lip because I see on the reference that there's a bright highlight there. So I just want to add a small amount of paint so that I can pull out my highlights later with an eraser. Remember, for something to look light, we need to have dark next to it. So we always need to have a bit of paint down to erase into it. In the last part of this video, we worked on the skin textures on the cheek and on this side of the face. So now as I'm working on the lip, I notice that I want to add some more texture, some more highlights to this side of the face. So I took a break from working on the lips and I just switched over to my eraser and just very lightly pulled out a few highlights. Now while I'm doing this, I'm looking at those textures that we sprayed in with that texture template and just like before, trying to add highlights into the right of each one. Now it's important to note that you could adjust how much of a highlight you pull out by the pressure you use on your eraser. Now if I use a lot of pressure and I keep erasing, my 
highlight's going to pull out basically pure white right down to the gessoed canvas. But I could also pull out a softer, more subtle highlight just by using less pressure and not erasing as much. And this is so great to add a variety of textures onto the skin. If the highlight is extremely bright, it's going to look like it's farther away from the skin, like a bump that's protruding out. And if it's softer, it's going to look closer to the skin. And this is going to help give more depth to the image and it's going to create a more realistic skin texture because if you pay attention to any skin texture on anyone you'll notice that some bumps are more raised and some are more subdued and there's, there's a lot of variety and variance going on so we have to do the best we can to try to replicate that in our paintings going back to the lips with the eraser we're going to start pulling out some more highlights so i'm starting right here above the upper lip pulling up that bright highlight just above it and then i'm working down to this lower lip because we haven't really erased any true highlights out of this yet so like I said before, when you erase, sometimes the highlight comes out too bright, but that's never a problem because we could lightly spray over it to darken it down. So while I'm using my eraser, I'm essentially using this like a pen or a pencil, just drawing with it because the paint's there. When you erase with it, it's going to pull out a pure highlight, like uh, almost like you would with a small white paintbrush. But we know that's not the case, right? It's erasing out the paint and we're getting our highlight that way through a, a negative technique. But you'll notice that a lot of these highlights or folds and wrinkles on the lips are kind of forming in a vertical motion. There's a few horizontal ones too, but what I'm basically doing is to the right of each one of those shadows, pulling out a small thin highlight just by taking the eraser and basically drawing with it right from the bottom up to the middle section of the lip. And if I notice one part of a highlight is slightly brighter, I just use more pressure on the eraser and that's going to pull out a brighter highlight. If I want a highlight that's extremely bright, like this one between the lips, I'm going to switch over to an X-Acto blade or I could even use a small airbrush needle. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to pull out a thin horizontal highlight right between these lips and it's going to give me a very, very bright white line. If you're using your X-Acto blade and you notice that it's not pulling out a highlight, try cutting with it in the other direction because at the very edge of any blade there's something called a burr which is basically the very edge of the steel bent in one direction or the other so it's going to pull out paint better in one direction than it might in the other direction so if it doesn't pull out just try switching the other way and I bet it'll work. Now there's nothing wrong with using other tools on your painting so here I'm switching over to a black Prisma colored pencil and I noticed that this lower lip has some very dark shadows to it almost like cast shadows so I'm using this to help darken some of them up and just like an eraser you can decide how how dark you get these values by how much pressure you use. If you use more, they're going to get darker. So just using this to define some of these shadows helps me out instead of switching back to an airbrush with a darker value. And while I'm using the black colored pencil, I'm also going to add a few more of the facial hairs in right here above the lip just to help define some of them and make some of them sharper, you know, contrasted with the airbrush ones that we did before. That's going to complete the mouth. Now, if you notice that some of the values or the hues on the lips are not red enough for you, you could lightly spray over some red, maybe some red scarlet over the lips, just a very, very thin dusting of paint over it. And that'll help shift the hue to a more red stone and that's what I decided to do here I just added some scarlet into my airbrush thin with a few drops of water and lightly sprayed it over the upper lip and then basically on the corners of the lower lip and you could see it before and after here how the hue slightly shifts to a reddish tone so now let's move along to the last part of the portrait, which is the nose. Drawing or painting the nose isn't that difficult. The trick for it is you have to add in a lot of very soft and subtle transitions. There's very few sharp defined lines on the nose with exceptions around the nostrils and around the edges of the nose. So here I'm starting with my lighter flesh tone and you could see I sprayed a very light texture over the top of the nose before I got into this painting using the texture template. And also where the nostrils are, I used my darker value, which is number two, and I filled those in with a good amount of paint to help darken them. You can see they almost look black, which is what I want for this. So with using this lighter flesh tone, I'm adding in some texture around the nostril, and I'm also using the same color to define the nose. I'm basically sculpting it here. I'm adding some shadows in toward the back, and this is gonna push those farther away from us, and the brighter areas are gonna look closer to us, and we're gonna create that illusion of a 3D nose. If you just use the airbrush and paint freehand, you're gonna get a very soft look, which people would say it kind of has that airbrush look. It almost looks too soft and it, it doesn't really look like a nose. The nose or skin has texture to it. So as I spray this, I'm going to try the best I can to kind of move it around and almost like jiggle the airbrush around to create some randomness and some patterns um, going on in the nose. And 
These are going to be softer than the texture template because they're just done freehand. But again, it's good to have that variety in it. Some sharper ones and some softer ones. And using the same color and my airbrush shield, I'm just spraying a small amount to help define this area of cartilage, which is called the columella between the two nostrils. Now this video is obviously sped up, but you can see in about two or three minutes, I'm able to get the basic shapes of the nose in. And this will work fine for 90% of the cases. But again, we're going to push a little bit further and we're going to try to get some more texture to it. But as long as you have those deep, dark shadows for the nostrils and that cast shadow off to the side of the nose and some brighter highlights in the front, you're going to really create that depth to the image. High contrast will always help push that 3D effect that we're going for. Of course, once we're done with the paint, I switch over to the eraser. So I'm starting with an electric eraser, pulling out a few highlights, and I decided those were slightly too bright. So I'm switching to, this is the Mars razor, which is a pencil stick eraser. And I'm using this to pull out my highlights. And again, what I love is that I can control how much I pull out just by how much pressure I use. So when I use this, I basically press down it and, and I use a small circular motion to pull out each highlight. If I want the highlight extremely bright, I could switch back to my electric eraser or like I'm doing now with my Dremel tool. And these are going to pull out extremely bright highlights. And these type of highlights are called specular highlights because what they're doing is catching and directly reflecting the light source. Now, sometimes even in shadows, there's some light that's being reflected off other parts of the portrait or even maybe the room around it. So right here before this cast shadow, I noticed that there's some light being reflected off. So I'm just using my eraser to pull out a soft highlight. And then on top of that, I'm switching to my Dremel tool and pulling out a few very bright specular specular highlights. From my personal experience, I don't think you ever really need an electric eraser or a Dremel tool. Some of those highlights are just too bright when they pull out. You can see I use it quite a bit, but in my opinion, I think you're best off just using a normal stick pencil eraser because they're going to give you more subtlety in an image, and that's really more important. If you want to get some brighter ones, it's good to have a, an electric eraser to pull those out, but I think you could do 99% of the work just with a normal eraser. And again, I noticed that some of these highlights were pulled out too bright. No big deal, so I switch back to my airbrush and lightly spray over it, and I'm constantly switching back between my airbrush and my eraser to get the desired effect that I want. The last thing I want to do is define the edge of the nose here, so I'm spraying the smallest amount of paint with my shield over this side, and it just gives a very subtle contour, a very subtle line around the outside that helps kind of pull it all together. So if you're working on a portrait, hopefully this video helped you out with two parts, the mouth and the nose. Don't overthink it and just work slow. And again, don't worry about making mistakes because you're always going to make mistakes in art. It's just part of the whole process. So I wish you the best of luck in your painting journey. Always be excited about it and try to have fun when you're working on it because that's going to bring you back and it's going to get you more inspired to work on more interesting artwork in the future. And since this video is being posted a few days before Christmas, I want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and a Happy New Year. So that's going to do it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.